Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. I just picked up a handful of shades of the new Chanel Rouge Coco Bloom lipstick. This is the brand new formula that just launched. So this is already available in boutiques, of course. I checked this morning and I checked again right before I sat down to film. It looks like it's not available online just yet, but that could change any minute even by the time I get this video posted. So I will continue to update you guys when they are available to add to cart, but the product page is already there. So I will link that down below. That way you can check out all of the shades. And I was able to swatch nearly all of them in store today with the exception of one, but I swatched 19 shades of this lipstick. I'm missing number 112, Opportunity, but the rest I was able to see in person and I took photos and video. I'm gonna insert the photo here and I will number each of them. That way you can see which lipstick corresponds to what. I will also insert the video. That way you can see what they look like with a little light reflection. They are very creamy, really opaque, which I love. I think this could easily become my favorite bullet lipstick formula from Chanel. You can see whenever I swipe them on the arm, one swipe is truly all you need. Without trying them on the lips just yet, based solely on the texture and overall appearance, I would say there is definitely a noticeable difference in the formula between the Rouge Coco Flash lipsticks and this new Rouge Coco Bloom. So according to the website, they are a long wear, intense color with hydrating benefits and a high shine finish with a plumping appearance, but not necessarily plumping effect. So when I first found out about these lipsticks and I heard they were coming, I was told they were going to be plumping, which I took to mean they would be kind of minty. But when I was in store earlier today shopping around, we were all just talking about it since they are brand new and I don't think that is the case, but we'll find out. I picked up four shades to test. I have 110 Chance, 116 Dream, 124 Merveille, 126 season and I am so glad I was able to swatch them all and see them in person because I had to change my mind. I made some last minute decisions. Originally I was planning to pick up Dream, Chance, Blossom, and Season. I traded out Blossom and I instead I picked up the 124 because in person it just didn't really look that pretty. I was hoping they would have more of a coral selection or even an orangey color but they just didn't. It's Chanel, so it's a lot of pink and red with multiple undertones. I'm happy that they added some berries and they also have some nudes on either side of the spectrum. The majority of the shade range is going to be pretty red. I almost purchased Destiny. That's another one that stood out to me as being very beautiful and interesting. The only reason I didn't pick it up is because at $40 each, I need to make sure I'm going to wear it and it does fall into the red family. If you don't have too many reds though, I would look at Destiny as well as these four. So now I'm going to zoom you in closer. I will unbox these and we'll try them on. The exterior packaging matches the new lipstick tube instead of gold and black, it's silver and black. So it says Rouge Coco Bloom and silver. It still has the same clear cap that you'll see on the Rouge Coco Flash and then the little silver band. On the front of the packaging, it does say hydrating, plumping, intense shine lip color, 110 chance. So maybe it will be plumping after all. The ingredients are so teeny tiny, it's impossible to read. I have no idea if there's anything minty in there. I don't want to interfere with the shades at all since we have four to test, so I'm not going to use a lip liner. But I do think this formula would probably work really nicely with a lip liner. <gasps> so pigmented. They feel amazing. Really pretty. I love this shade, 110 Chance. Feels really good. It feels very similar to the Rouge Coco Flash, but maybe a teeny tiny bit thicker. It's very buttery, it's still pretty soft. Softer than I thought it was going to be. 
you know, the Chanel lipsticks almost feel like they're melting on your lips. None of them are really hard and thick. They don't feel like they're really hugging your lips, like a Tom Ford lipstick or the Hourglass lipsticks. I think it's because they have so many hydrating oils inside the formula. I really like how opaque the color is. It's very pigmented, not patchy or splotchy at all. It just coats the lips. And my lips were feeling a little bit dry before I applied that. And you can't tell at all. It looks very even. It looks very hydrated. Wow. I'm impressed. I honestly should have done a lip scrub before I even uh, sat down to film. I didn't. And it turns out I didn't need to. Ooh, I like it. The next shade I have to test is 116 Dream. This was another highly requested shade and another nude. I have deja vu. <laughs> Hold on. Also really pretty, slightly more pink. They're similar. They are different. If you prefer a peachy pinky nude, I think Dream would be best. If you prefer a more peachy pumpkin nude, I think Chance. All you see is the pigment. You can't even really see your natural lip shining through, which is a big difference between these and the Rouge Coco Flash, which go on a little bit more sheer. I love it. The color is so even. It makes your lips look really flawless, but they feel incredible. Moving right along, shade 3 is 124 Merveille. You'll have to pardon me, I might be butchering that name. You know, when I was looking at all of the shades and I decided against the coral, because I just didn't think it would be that flattering, not the type of shade I would really get use out of, I figured I have two nudes, one fuchsia pink, didn't really want to dabble in the reds, which is why I skipped Destiny. I wanted to throw in an everyday pink, and I do think Dream would be a really nice everyday pink, even though it's kind of a pinky nude. It's kind of pink. This one looks like it might have more of a neutral or coolish undertone. Cool-ish. Let's see. Oh my gosh. That is a lot brighter than I thought it was going to be. Wow. It looks really bright, doesn't it? I like it. It is far more intense than I had anticipated. I thought this would maybe be the bullet form of endless pink. But this looks so bright. Not in a bad way, but this would not be an everyday lipstick to me. How funny. I think the lesson here is you can only learn so much from an arm swatch. Yes, it's great to see it swatched on your arm, but on the lip is really the only test, especially since I scrubbed off my sunless tan recently, so my arm is very pale, and my lips do have a little bit of color, so that extra pink tinge underneath the lipstick helps to make it a bit darker. I do think this would be a really pretty summer color. I like it. It's very special. It's not what I expected, but it's still very pretty. And I, for some reason, I feel really happy that I did choose this over the coral. I think I would have regretted picking that up. Mm. You never know. I didn't get a chance to try it on the lips, so we'll never know. But I do really like this color. I don't think I have a lot of colors like this. We're down to the last lipstick shade. Here I have 126 Season. It looks like a bright fuchsia pink, which I have so many lipsticks. I really didn't want to pick up too many shades, but I don't have very many fuchsia pinks. So I thought at least this would add something a little bit different to my collection. Let's see. Mmm, very bright pink. 
I really like it. It almost looks like strawberry red on the lips. In the swatch, it looked bright fuchsia. The lipsticks are so intense. This looks red on my lips. And this is somewhere kind of in the middle of the shade spectrum. It's hard to tell. I almost need to see it in natural light. When I look in the viewfinder, it kind of looks red. When I look up close, I can tell it's not. Either way, I think it is very pretty. This is more of a special occasion color, not something I'm going to wear every day. But I will find an, an excuse to wear this. Because they are a bit buttery, I would recommend using a lip liner. It's not smudging that much, but I think it, these lipsticks probably have the potential to feather around the outside. A lip liner will make a huge difference. Those are the shades I picked up, and overall, I'm very happy with these new Rouge Coco Bloom lipsticks. I love the formula. They feel very smooth, very buttery and hydrating, but they feel really nourishing. All of the Chanel lipsticks go on and they feel really nice, but the Bloom feels a little bit more substantial. I don't want to say thick because it's still not a very thick formula, but it feels thicker than the Rouge Coco Flash. It definitely has more pigment. The color is far more opaque than Rouge Coco Flash, but I even like it better than the Rouge Allure and the Rouge Coco lipsticks. The Rouge Coco lipsticks are nice. They're also hydrating, but they've never been incredibly long wearing. Rouge Allure is meant to be a bit more long wearing, and they're also a bit more opaque than the Rouge Coco, but this is so much better than that because these feel very creamy and buttery very smooth, a lot more smoothing than the Rouge Allure. I feel like it does kind of coat the lip. It's just nice. Color goes on very opaque. It's almost like a filter for your lip. One swipe is all you really need, but when I look closely in the mirror, I don't see any lines. I don't see any patches. Everything looks really smooth as if I painted a top coat over the lip. I can just tell that these are going to be long wearing. I'm gonna leave this one, the deepest one on, through the evening, I'm gonna eat dinner with it, and I will see how long lasting it is, and then I will pin a comment on the top of this video, and I'll let you know if I have any thoughts in terms of the wear. They're not minty. I'm not sure I think this is a really plumping formula. Yeah, nothing really plumping about them. Hydrating, yes, intense color payoff and high shine finish, absolutely. Check, check, check. I think it's safe to say this is my new number one favorite bullet lipstick formula from Chanel. The La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu Longwear lipsticks will always be my favorite because I love the fact that they are so long wearing, 24 hours and beyond, but also the fact that they are transfer resistant, they're kiss proof, they're mask proof, they're just very... It's a very functional lipstick, hard to beat that. But this would be next in terms of bullet lipsticks because it just feels the best out of all of them. And I love the color payoff. Let's see, should we do the kiss test? Yeah, not transfer resistant. So this is a lipstick that unfortunately, if you had to throw a mask on top, it would smudge all over the place. Like most of any bullet lipstick. I'm very happy with all of the shades I picked out. This one I probably won't get as much use out of. I would recommend Dream and Chance. These were the two most popular. These nudes are really nice. And they're not that light. I think this is a pretty substantial nudey nude and pinky nude. They're, these are going to be very flattering for most skin tones. These I'm just going to pop in my purse. I think I will get the most use out of these. And that completes today's video, short and sweet. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I wanna hear from you guys. What is your favorite shade? Are you interested in this lipstick? Drop me a comment. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.